Do you struggle with speed walls? Have you tried all the finger exercises out there, including scales and hannon, and you still can't bring your pieces up to speed? In this video, I will share the five main secrets used by professionals to achieve effortless speed and velocity. So get ready for a complete change of perspective. Hello everyone, this is Ilinka Vartik, founder of PianoCareerAcademy.com, where I help you to find mastery, brilliance and fulfillment in your playing through my holistic approach to piano education. So, why are your fingers so wooden and disobedient? Why is it so hard to play those passages with virtuosic ease? No, it's not just about experience, the number of hours you put in, or the amount of finger drills you do every day. In fact, this is the main reason you struggle with speed. You focus too much on your fingers, ignoring what happens up the chain in your wrist, arms, upper body, and especially your mind. Simply put, no amount of exercises can help if you are missing these five fundamental pillars. The first one is whole arm action, of course. Movement requires energy. So what is the engine behind finger movement? Most people think that fast playing means fast fingers. To improve velocity, they do endless finger exercises, hoping to train and strengthen their finger muscles. However, the fingers are the weakest element of a pianist's toolkit. As a source of energy, they are not efficient. Finger muscles tire quickly when trying to depress the weighted piano keys. And separate finger action can be a major source of tension and pain, as I explain in my tutorial focused on preventing piano injuries. Simply put, the fingers are not the engine of the car. They are just the wheels. Without the energy coming from the engine, the wheels alone will not take you very far. So, what is the engine then? It's our entire upper body, especially the stronger muscles of your back, shoulders and upper arms. This engine works in perfect symbiosis with gravity and the leverage principle. If this powerful engine is not working or it's disconnected from the wheels because of a wrist tension here, no amount of separate finger exercises will make a difference. Even worse, by trying to develop finger agility without building your arm and wrist technique first, you risk forming bad habits and even injuring yourself. The solution is to learn how to use the arm and channel weight into the keys before worrying about the smaller finger movements. The arm is the engine, it is the foundation, and whole arm weighted playing is one of the most important secrets behind the effortless and brilliant playing of great pianists. Let me demonstrate what I mean. Let's say that you want to play this simple C major scale up and down in one octave. If you only use your fingers, keeping the wrist and the arm stiff and motionless, it will feel like you're choking, your speed will be severely limited, and you will also tire quickly. Besides the big effort involved in pressing the heavy keys with the weak finger muscles, there is another reason for this limitation. Take a close look at your forearm and start wiggling your fingers. Do you see that each time you move a finger, a tendon that goes all the way to the elbow is activated? I hope you can see it in the camera. I will not bore you with anatomy and medical terminology now. All you need to know is that 
a stiff and disengaged arm locks these tendons in place, acting as a brake for your fingers, so that you need to put in a lot of effort to make them move. And now I will play the same passage by using whole arm action. The arm is loose, the keys are depressed by the natural weight coming from my back, and there are no blockages in my elbow or wrist. The arm does most of the work, and it also leads the way as a powerful wing, literally giving the fingers no choice but to fall. So the arm takes the fingers back and forth. The arm is the leader, and it can move quite quickly as it goes up and down the keys. You see? The fingers are the followers, and they are literally swept away in the needed direction, as if by a powerful wind. The only thing that's left is accuracy and evenness, which we will discuss at the end of the video. Yes, using the arm does not mean that your fingers become passive or lazy. They still have their part to play. We still need to train them but only after we understand how they fit into the bigger picture. Now, keep in mind that whole arm action cannot be fully understood after watching one short video, and it can only be learned in a step-by-step -step manner, non legato first. This entire process is covered in our courses and tutorials at Piano Career Academy, and I also share many important secrets in my free myth series, which you can access by following the second link in the description box below. The next fundamental pillar is correct alignment between your body, arm, elbow, wrist, and hand. Most beginners perceive the keyboard as a bidimensional surface that can only be approached via this 90-degree angle. They also sit too low and too close to the instrument and their hands are forced into this unnatural shape that makes sense to the logical mind. It's all nice and perpendicular, but does not take into consideration our physiology. Effortless piano playing is not logical. It is physiological and very ergonomic. Posture and alignment are crucial for acquiring velocity straight back, correct distance from the keys so that the elbows are not trapped by your torso, correct height that allows us to use leverage while playing as opposed to the lack of leverage which happens when we sit too low. All of these are essential for building any piano skill, including speed. And if we talk about the arms and hands, there needs to be a natural alignment between the upper arms, forearms, and hands. The elbow and wrist are loose and there are no sharp angles or awkward twists anywhere. The hand dome is naturally rounded. The fingers are not too curved, retaining this effortless shape, you see. Please notice that this comfortable position is not perpendicular to the keys, but a bit oblique and it allows us to channel weight without any strain or effort. Without this alignment, whole arm action is not possible, because there has to be this open line of energy from the back to the last finger joint. In other words, piano playing is not this bidimensional activity where the hand and fingers move like a typewriter up and down the keys in a perpendicular manner. Instead, it is three-dimensional. And our movements, including the tilt of our hands, have to always be adapted to the layout of the passage we play. Even in playing a wide key passage, you see, my alignment is still comfortable. Look, it's oblique, it's natural, 
and I'm not forcing my arm and my hand into this stiff 90 degree position. When black keys are involved or bigger gaps between notes, the dance of our hands becomes even more fluid and breathing. Do you see how I adapt the orientation of my hand depending on the shape of the passage while maintaining this foundation of natural and tension-free alignment? Also, do you notice that I keep leading with the arm and wrist as I play? From here results the next secret – arm and wrist navigation. This technique is a game changer and it is also very powerful whenever you come across passages containing big stretches. As I already mentioned, our wheels or the fingers are not very good leaders. Yes, the car cannot move without them, but they cannot replace the engine. So, if you're trying to play a passage faster, but your fingers are the pathfinders, so to speak, dragging the arm and the wrist after them, speed walls are inevitable. Instead, always lead with the arm, as I already briefly demonstrated when we talked about whole arm action. Plus, and here is the important bit, use your wrist as a navigator especially when you have bigger stretches. When coming across a wide passage, most players these days try to conquer it by stretching their fingers long, which creates tension, feels awkward and takes a lot of time, therefore sabotaging speed. Instead, take the fingers to the needed position with the help of your flexible wrist. This motion is effortless, fluid, it prevents tension because the wrist is relaxed and allows you to move from one position to the next one much quicker. Instead of stretching, you have flying. Instead of tension, there is relaxation and comfort. In terms of arm and wrist navigation, another trick I like to use is the launch pad. Let's say that we want to play this melodic A minor scale. Besides leading with the arm and wrist, you can also imagine that you're launching yourself forward as you start playing. This launch is a whole arm impulse, not something that's limited to your fingers. Of course, this has to be done in limited quantities and you should not try to do these launches before you practice your scale or passage slowly first, including non-legato, which is something I cover in lots of detail in our scale and arpeggio course. But when you're ready to increase the tempo, this launching motion can be super helpful. As you surely noticed until now, every movement I make while playing fast, is loose and relaxed. And now we finally reach the most important technical secret behind fast playing – relaxation. As martial arts practitioners know, tension and speed cannot coexist. If your arms and wrists are tensed and stiff, fast playing will always remain a distant dream. Whole arm action goes hand in hand with relaxation. Learning how to be loose and relaxed while playing is a fundamental skill that professional students learn from day one. Let me demonstrate again the posture and the rigid technique used by most beginner and intermediate players nowadays. Even with my extensive experience, I cannot play this scale too fast in this manner. Once I relax my joints and I keep my arm loose, my fingers acquire wings. Keep in mind that relaxation does not mean a complete lack of control. 
we cannot fully disengage all our muscles while playing. If we did, we would simply fall off the bench and our fingers would not be able to depress a key. Instead, we need to learn when to engage a muscle group and when to let go of tension so that our hands are always breathing and fatigue cannot accumulate anywhere, sabotaging our speed and causing pain. In professional terms, this knowledge of when to engage and when to relax is called the cycle of effort relaxation and I cover it in many other tutorials. And now that we talked about technique for quite a while, it's time to move to the good stuff. Visualization and mental training. I saved the best for last. Remember, the fingers cannot move faster than your brain. When you do this, it's not the fingers moving. It's your brain sending impulses to your muscles through neural pathways. This sounds complicated, but it's actually quite easy. Let's do a simple exercise together. If again we try to play this basic C major scale and we start pressing the notes randomly, just noticing what our fingers can do. It can take a very long time to increase speed even if you do apply some of the tips I shared earlier. If, on the other hand, first you imagine the scale in your mind in a certain tempo, you are instantly conditioning your neural pathways to fire at that speed. It's no longer about what you can do from a physical point of view. It's about what you want to do. Mind that a slow practice is crucial when learning anything and you should never skip it. Now I'm simply showing you how to use visualization techniques after you have already built a stable foundation in a slow tempo. Have you noticed that if you learn a new piece on your own without your teacher's demonstration or without listening to good recordings in the practice process, you will most likely keep playing it quite slowly in a clumsy, static manner, as if you are stomping in place no matter how much you practice. That's because you lack vision and you don't know how the piece should ultimately sound. Your fingers are in charge instead of your mind. And let me tell you a secret. Your fingers are not just weak from a physical point of view. They are also not very smart or musical. Trusting them to lead your musical journey or even one single practice session is a silly endeavor. However, the moment you listen to a recording or your teacher's demonstration, you can instantly play the piece better and also faster. The muscle conditioning, which is important of course, it hasn't changed after one listen. So how come your fingers can move faster now? It's because speed comes from the brain, from what we call our inner hearing. Remember, if the intention is clear, the body will follow. If there is no intention, you will fumble in the dark for a very long time until speed is reached as a result of hundreds of mechanical repetitions. Even so, Mindless practice is very unreliable and there are dangerous pitfalls at every corner. Visualization techniques are used by successful people in all fields, including athletes, designers, entrepreneurs or actors. Glenn Gould used to say that we play piano with our mind, not our fingers. Mental training is the number one secret of all brilliant musicians. You'll find many tutorials on this topic in the members area of Piano Career Academy, including this one, focused on mental practice. And now, as a conclusion, a couple of important bonus tips. All the black belt fundamentals I shared in this video do not cancel the importance of technical training. Finger agility and strength 
they do matter. The power and obedience of our fingers can and should be exercised. Scales and arpeggios work. I have an entire course focused on them. Studies work. Practicing your repertoire correctly works. The magnifying glass method works, especially when the speed wall is caused by an uncomfortable transition that needs to be isolated and conquered. Slow, relaxed practice is also crucial, and there are many other professional tricks you can use depending on the exact requirements of your piece. All of these practice methods are not cancelled by whole arm action, relaxation or visualization. However, without the foundation we discussed today, finger training alone will not take you anywhere. For optimal results, both the foundation and the roof, the engine and the wheels need to be in good shape. They are not mutually exclusive, but complementary. So learn to see the bigger picture, but always put the horse in front of the cart. And the last tip for today, your level matters as well. Efficient technical development can only happen in a healthy, progressive manner. If you try to skip levels and play the winter wind etude while you're still a beginner, thinking that a couple of YouTube videos will help you to acquire the virtuosic speed needed for this etude, you are up for a very rude awakening, not to mention painful injuries. All the tips I shared today work when you practice pieces, studies and scales suitable for your level. They are not a shortcut or a magic pill, and they cannot replace a regular mindful practice. Ultimately, however, music is not about speed. It's about the message you send and how convincingly you can do it. It's about growth, big picture thinking, awareness and joy. The biggest secret of all is that speed is like happiness if you stop chasing it and simply commit to your daily practice, to following a holistic step-by-step -step method. It will come naturally and inevitably. If, on the other hand, you keep obsessing about it while disregarding other important aspects of your practice, it will elude you forever. Metaphorically speaking, if we have a tree with sick yellow leaves and we want them to be green, we don't simply treat the leaves. First of all, we make sure that the soil has enough nutrients and water and that the tree gets plenty of sun. With proper care, nutrition and hydration, the leaves will inevitably get healthy. This is why I created Piano Career Academy. In the members area, you will find step-by-step -step courses and in-depth tutorials for all levels that will help you to develop your entire skill set in a healthy, fun and harmonious manner, from the roots to the leaves. To become a member, simply click on the first link in the description box below. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that your perspective on fast playing will never be the same. Practice mindfully and I will see you soon with another video. Love you guys. Bye-bye.